The Jewish people inspired fear, revulsion, and hatred among the English during the Middle Ages. They looked and talked a little different, their customs were different, and their religion it was different. They also reviled them as the killer of Christ, a Jew who advocated love thy neighbor as thyself, second only in importance to love the Lord thy God, ironically enough, given the attitude of the age. When asked, who is my neighbor, Jesus, very pertinent to the video's subject, replied with a story of a Samaritan helping out a Jew who was in distress, despite that at the time Jews and Samaritans avoided contact with each other like the plague. When they did encounter one another, violence between them was very common. In this case, while Jews passed the injured Jew by, it was the Samaritan who became a neighbor to his enemy, a Jew. It was a message within a message. The 12th century, largely Christian English, uh, apparently they missed the point. The Jewish presence in England had come at the invitation of King William I, William the Conqueror, who found dealing with the Jewish people quite useful. Christian doctrine forbade usury or lending money for interest, denouncing it as a sin. Jews, on the other hand, were free to act as moneylenders and were permitted to set high interest rates. They worked as international financiers and coin dealers and played a major part in maintaining England's treasury. This worked out great for the kings who could wheel and deal and tax the Jews up the yin-yang. It didn't sit so well with those who may have taken a high interest loan and found that they couldn't pay it back, or maybe they were simply jealous of the Jewish lender's immense wealth. There was one landowner in particular, Richard Malbus from York, who was hopelessly in debt to Jewish moneylenders. He had been desperate to find a solution to his problem and came to the conclusion that the only way to get rid of his debt was to get rid of his debtors. When King Richard I left on crusade in October of 1189, he began to put his plan together. Although the Jews were under the protection of the king, riots broke out in York, led by, you guessed it, Richard Malbus, and Jewish homes were also set on fire. The mob also murdered any Jews that were not killed in the fires. The Jewish people, all too familiar from past experience that a pogrom or slaughter was underway, they ran for protection. 150 people sought refuge in Clifford's Tower. On March the 16th, 1190, a siege forced the Jews from the tower. Many of them chose suicide rather than converting to Christianity or counting on the mercy of the mob outside. After killing their families, they set fire to Clifford's Tower and took their own lives. The few that decided to take their chances, they died at the hands of the rioters. Richard Malbus immediately headed over to the local cathedral York Minster, where the Jewish bonds were kept and burned them, figuring that this was the end of his money troubles. Not hardly, though, all of his family lands were eventually confiscated and Malbus fled. His exact whereabouts were unknown. When King Richard I got wind of all of this in France, he was not pleased to say the least. Beyond the loss of some of his major financial backers, Malbus and his mob were undermining his authority. Thus, he slapped the city of York with a hefty fine. By then, all of the instigators had made themselves scarce. He then established the Exchequer of the Jews in 1194, which, among other things, ensured that even should a Jewish lender be killed and his house burned down, detailed records of who owed money to that individual would survive. This, of course, made it pointless for debtors to try to kill off the people that they owed money to. This helped ensure that the monarch could continue to use the Jewish lenders as a significant source of revenue whenever the monarchy needed money. So I really hope you found that video interesting. A little dark, I know. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and also subscribe. This is a new channel that really does help. Also, hit that notification button. We're not quite on a regular schedule yet, so if you hit that notification bell, you should actually get a notification when we put out a new video, which is helpful at this stage. We're working on getting on a regular schedule, but all of these things, they take time. And as always, thank you for watching.